Hey guys, welcome to another lesson here at THSS Technology. Uh, my apologies, first of all, for uh, being so long in between our videos. We've had kind of a, 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 a slow start uh, down at the tech lab, a lot of work to get kind of caught up in a bunch of new classes we're teaching. Uh, but we're back at it now, and uh, we're going to get started today with a Unity lesson all about how to make a very simple player controller script for a top-down game. So let's get started by making our player. Now I'm just going to make a cube as a placeholder for now. I know a lot of you have been working on, uh, on some, uh, some better sprite design, far better than I can make. Uh, but for us, we're just going to do a very simple cube, right? And the cube doesn't do anything, it, it's just a cube. Uh, but there's our lovely cube in the scene. So let's uh, create a script now that we can start manipulating and moving that cube. So I'm going to go down to my scripts folder here. And we're going to right click, create a new C sharp script. And we're going to call this script Layer Controller, capital P, capital C. And um, at the standard naming conventions, you're welcome to name your script whatever you want. However, I recommend keeping it similar or under similar naming convention, therefore to make it a lot easier when you're working together or you're having other people trying to help and debug your game. So I got my player controller script there and let's double click to open it up in Visual Studio. Now I'm running Visual Studio 2017. Oh, in the classroom we've 2019, but they are close enough. 2019 is actually quite a bit nicer, uh, but it'll work for the purpose of this lesson. So what I want to get started with first actually is I want it so when I play my game, my player resets to a starting position, a home position. Because it's not uncommon for you to be moving your player around here in the scene menu to test certain things, see how it looks. And it's kind of a pain every time if you have to go back and put them back to that zero, zero, zero point. So I want it so when I press play, it sets my player's home. And that's a pretty good, easy code to get started with here. So what are we really wanting to do? Well, we're wanting to transform the position of the cube. Okay, and we did a whole lesson on how to use the Unity API through Google. Um, so this is good to get in the habit of constantly looking up things in the Unity API, but we're gonna skip that step today. And what we're just gonna do is we're gonna do transform.position, because I already kind of said that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna make the transform position of our object equal to a new vector three. Now a vector is just a, a point, right? And a vector three is a point on an X, Y, and Z system. And I now want my vector three to be zero, zero, and zero. We're gonna end that with a semicolon. We're gonna press Control S to save that. Let's go back into Unity, take our player controller script, drag it onto our player and click play. And you see our cube is gonna appear in the center. It doesn't matter where we move it around during testing, when we go to test the actual play of the game, it puts it on zero, zero, and zero. Very handy. Okay, so let's get this cube moving now. Let's just say I want it to move right. Not controlled by the player, but just in general move right. A handy thing if you're making just autonomous enemies that are kind of just moving around the screen, maybe you have to dodge them, asteroids, the like. Uh, so how do we make a very, very simple moving script? Well, once again, we want to go to the Unity API and look up, uh, you know, transforming the movement of an object. And a good way to remember what the command is, is if we think over to when we were learning Blender, uh, when you're moving objects in Blender, you're using what's called the translate ability. So translate is the actual term we want to use. So we're going to put this in the void update, and we're going to do transform.translate. Okay, because so we want to move the transform position. Okay, and how do we want to translate it? Well, it's going to give us a hint there. It says we're going to want to put in a vector three. Okay, so let's put in our vector three. Thanks, you need for the tip. And now what direction do I want to go into? Well, I want it to go right. Okay, good. Well, let's just leave it at that, any semicolon. Hit control S, and it's going to run this 60 times a second, because we're in the void update here. Okay, so let's go back into Unity now and hit play. It's going to reset us to 000, and boom, it's gone. It's moving 60 Unity units a second, okay? That's a little too fast, so let's slow that down. Well, how do we slow that down? We want to adjust its speed. And once again, the Unity API would be some good hints here. But basically what we want to do is we want to use something called time.delta time. Okay, so time.delta time. Watch what happens when I do that. It's going to take it moving 60 units a second. To one unit a second. Oh, that's slow. Okay, so let's speed that up now. So now we can add a multiplier to that. Let's multiply it by five, for example. Okay, control S, save it, back into Unity, click play. Now it's going to move five times faster. Excellent. You know, that's a bit too fast. Maybe I want it at four. Let's go, control S, go back to Unity, go and test it. That's a bit better. Maybe I want 4.5. And he, but you can see it's, it gets a pain every time you want to go in and change this, uh, change this, uh, this, this number inside of Unity. If there was only a quicker way, well, there is. Um, now there's a proper way to do this and a, and a simple way for now. Let's do the simple way for now. After we've called the public class here at the top, we're going to create a new public. Now, best conventions is you should make this a private and serialize it. 
that's a lesson for another day. We're just going to make a public now. We're going to create a public what? A public float. Uh, we talked about this. A float is just a number that can accept decimal values as opposed to an integer, which is whole numbers only. So we're going to create a public float. And we're going to call that speed. So what we've done is we've created a new dictionary word for our code to use here. And this word calling speed. And what is speed? It's a float. What's a float? It's just a number. So instead of putting four here, I'm going to put the word speed. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to go back in. I'm going to click play now. It's not going to move. And that's because, as you can see over here, our speed is set to zero. So let's put the speed to seven. Well, that's going too fast. Let's put it down to two. That's too slow. Let's put it to like 3.75. We can use decimals. Excellent. That looks good. So you can see the benefit of using these, the, the uh, creating these, these, these publics here because then you can change them inside the inspector as opposed to having to go back to the code every time you're doing that. Okay, good. Our cube moves. Wonderful. But um, we can't control it. But it's not that much more difficult to make it so we can control the player. We're only going to add in one more element to our equation here. Okay? One more element to this equation over here. And we're going to multiply speed by what's called an input. Now, an input is any time you're entering, uh, you're, you're, you're giving information to uh, your computer. In this case, the input you'll be doing is providing key presses in the keyboard. So essentially, say when you press a key, that is what's going to create the movement, allowing all of this to happen. So we're going to put input. But input what? Once again, a search of the Unity API would be very handy here. Just to save us some time, what we're wanting to do is something called input get access. Okay? Well, what access do we want to get here? Well, I want to get access horizontal. Always check for spelling and that bracket get access horizontal. And Unity recognizes the word horizontal. And it recognizes that is when you press the A and D or the left and right buttons on your keyboard. So let's go in now. It's not moving, but if I press A and D, it's going to move left and right. And the reason why it doesn't move when you're not pressing those buttons is when you don't press those buttons, it, it assumes the horizontal input gives it a value of zero. And it doesn't matter you know, the fact that you're moving right and you're moving at speed, anything times zero is going to end up at zero, so you're not going to move. So now that we've done the right, let's do the up and down. So we'll do transform.translate again. And let's do a new vector. We'll do a vector three. This time we're going to do vector three dot up. And we're going to multiply that by time dot delta time. And multiply that by speed. Recognize the speed now. And then times that by input dot get axis. And then vertical. Vertical is often misspelled, so make sure you don't make that mistake. I'm going to save that with control S. And now let's go back in, click play, and I can go left and right, and I can go up and down or diagonal or any direction I want as I press my keys. So that's the whole lesson for today. Keep working on your sprites for your game. Uh, next week we are going to look into uh, uh, creating a basic enemy script where the enemies will move around the screen just on their own by using the you know the vector three right and multiplying it by speed. So we'll do a very simple enemy script. But then we're also going to make it that if the enemies hit you, it will kill you. So we're starting to make the first elements of making it look like a game. So keep working on your spriting, and I will see you all later.